I'll, I'll be straight up about Chinatown. Like sometimes, you know, especially like in in modern media and stuff, you get this like weird subconscious thinking that you know you're not supposed to like you're not allowed to do business in Chinatown yeah. type thing. You know, and I respect that. Everyone respects that. And um, but when I moved when we moved in here, I realized that that's not what it's about. It's like it was actually the reverse. Like when we moved in, everyone was like, "Yo, like." You're the first motherfucker. It was yeah. like you know to come in here, and they started like showering us with flowers and Buddhas and gifts. And, yeah. You know, um, so it was like this weird miscommunication. I'll introduce you to some of those people right now. Let's walk over to Hot Woo. Hi. I just wanted to say hi. Oh, okay. This guy right here, he's the Iron Chef of Chinatown, and he cooks with stuff. He's got like a whole. This is like the real deal. He's got like a whole secret menu of like testicles and intestines and like penises and all kinds of shit back there. Uh, what do you call it? Rocky Mountain Oysters and all that shit. Rocky Mountain Oysters are <laughs> balls, right? Yeah, the balls, yeah. He's like the master of balls. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi, Chef. How are you? See? They're filming a movie about Chuck yeah. Chego. Yeah. Yeah. Their family has been amazingly nice to us since uh, we moved in. Thank you. These are these are the best. These are the Phoenix Bakery almond cookies. Yeah, I grew up on this shit. Man. Look at that. Oh wow. All buttery. Yeah. Thank you. Can you tell them about this? Was the first uh, food court in LA? Ethnic. First ethnic food court in LA. First Chinese. In all of LA. I, I want to say in America. There was some talk about it being uh, being some in um some place in Hawaii that I wasn't aware of, but when this building was built, huh. it was in Time Magazine and Life Magazine. I mean, Life Magazine is no more, yeah. but, um, you know, this every every space was a restaurant. Yeah. When I first came in 69, yeah. with all due respect, Chinese food in America wasn't, it was, just wasn't as um, flavorful as it is now. Yeah. Um, but when all that stuff started happening in the late 70s and the early 80s here, the live seafood restaurants, we had Young Sing Seafood and, and Monkey Seafood. Um, that was on Spring Street. Both of those places had lines down the street. Right. And that was like the first time that Westerners, Americans, really got to taste really ethnic, you know, really? cooking. Yeah. So to me, this is the most gangster shit ever in the world. He only got two things on the menu. That's it. He used to only have one thing. This used to be the only thing you could get on this. Really? This, so yeah, that's it. You know, that? It was a chicken pho. And it was the only thing, you know, like, that's what I love about, like, places like this. It's like, it's just so fucking, like, hand on the ball gangster shit. Like, yeah. no, we don't have this. We don't have right. this. You want to see our menu? That's our menu, you know. This used to be the... Um, the OG, OG Pho spot in LA. It was called Pho 79, um, but they sold it and changed it. And I think they just literally took the numbers and, <laughs> and swapped them. This is, a, this is another OG spot right here. This is Kim Chui. This, this place has been around forever. Hi. She gave me the pass to, to be able to open up up here. She had one of the Kogi Takis, like she would, she would be like uh, totally like just eyeing me out as we were doing construction. We brought the truck up one day, she had a taco, she's like... <laughs> I see you. Hi! This is the Chego menu. Um, rice bowls. We ate already, but I think I'll just cook uh, like our signature for you guys. And yeah. We'll get that going. This is our kitchen back here. We do our own version of char siu, just like, just like Lupe. Nice. You know, we do it in our own way. Again, like I told George, like we, we, we channel and respect everything before us, but we, we put our own spin on it. Yeah. We do a Korean meatball, which is a dumpling filling. So it's like having a dumpling, but into a meatball. A big part of who we are is organization, cleanliness, preparation, but at the same time, you know, like having our own swagger and our own attitude. The great thing about Chego, what, what I love about it is it looks like we, we just belong here. You know what yeah. I mean? It doesn't look, like, doesn't look like we came in on some big high horse or anything. Like, it feels like it's been here forever. And what he mentioned about Lupe and everything, I think for me, beyond sarcasm and all that stuff is, you know, 
I, I respected everything going on here. Yeah. But then I was very upfront when we started talking. I was like, I'm gonna bring my own style. I'm gonna we're gonna be ourselves. We're gonna we're gonna like be the way we are. We're gonna do it how we do it. But but we're also gonna respect because you know I know what that's all about too. But you got you know it's gonna be a little give and take, and it's worked out pretty well. You know. Hi.